All right. Well, we have to have an annual meeting, and we were going to have a face-to-face -face meeting last summer, and because of COVID, that didn't happen. So uh, this, is, this is our annual meeting, uh, not quite the traditional one. Uh, we had, we've had several exec, we've had executive committee meetings and board meetings across the, from last spring and through the summer. We had a executive board, or we had a WAS board of directors meeting on November 21st of this year. For this meeting that we're here, I won't, uh, I will dispense with uh, calling the roll because we can get that from the participant list and, um, Jaylene was a little bit too pessimistic. We we don't have a, over a hundred people still online, mm -hmm. but we have fifty. So <laughs> we're a little. No, I didn't see it either. Gonna... Okay, so for this part of the meeting, non-members are certainly welcome. Uh, but as I said before, when we get to the elections, I ask you to not vote. So so. I think the so we're going. I'm going to go through through the committee reports, old business, new business, and then to elections, and then we'll adjourn. So, in terms of the committee reports, um, I'm going to start off with the executive director. Obviously, we had intended to have a meeting of WAS in Missoula, Montana, in 20 in 2020, and we also had intended to have the fourth international bee and hive monitoring conference in Missoula, Montana. And everything was going swimmingly until COVID hit. And then that was followed by all plane flights from Italy being canceled, at which time, at least on the monitoring conference, every single one of our international speakers from overseas uh, canceled immediately. Um, the executive committee, convened, we had a discussion of this and we decided that things were just too uncertain to put people at risk to be for face-to-face -face meetings in the summer. We were going to essentially have something short like this for both WAS and for the monitoring conference, but I'll, as I'll tell you a little bit later, the monitoring conference uh, thing kind of had a life of its own and came on back on and we actually ended up having a week long meeting and I'll give you some information about that in a moment. So the so we have it's been a tumultuous year and like many small businesses was has had, had its own uh problems during the year that were not you know and certainly COVID didn't uh, facilitate anything. Hopefully none of our members uh really got sick from it or that we haven't lost anybody from COVID but we're doing our best to be responsible and not and not bring people together face to face. So Zoom's the way it's going to be for a while. Um, you, we do need to get some reports out of the way. So uh, let's start with the committee reports. Uh, Sherry, can you give us a, an overview of the finances? I had to unmute. Jerry. Sorry, I couldn't find myself. <laughs> Okay, so um, I am going to talk about the 2019 financials. Uh, at the end of the year, we had 35,798 in the bank. The income for the year was 55,300. Uh, the expenses for the year was 65,323 for a loss of about 10,000. Um, and from there, I'm going to go to the uh, Ashland Conference. We had total income of 34,660 with expenses of 45,660 for a $11,000 loss. So then, uh, as of November 30th, we've got 40,878 in the bank. We've had income of 13,809 and expenses of 8,800. So currently we're sitting at a 4,980 uh, income, net income. And I would take any questions. Shailene, you might have to uh, turn. 
microphones on the people. All right, I was going to do a poll. All right, that question before oh, they... Well, uh, oh, wrong poll. Okay, yep. Yeah, this is the financial report. Any questions on the financial report? So I guess, Jerry, you want to take a motion and then everybody can vote on that? Sure, just a second. And I made a poll to... Oh, actually, Charlie has already made a motion and Steve seconded. So we're okay, okay for the poll. So Jaylene, what what do we have a poll for approving a motion or? We do. Let me. Bear with us, folks. This is our first time doing this. It's our first time. Okay. How how about now? Go. Can you guys can you guys see yes. that? It's there. Thank you. Sorry, it's kind of a. I haven't done polls before. You're doing fine. Time. Yes, it looks fine. We got a motion that's okay. been seconded. Is there any discussion before we vote on the motion? All right, so we're sort of at a standstill on poll voting. So I'm gonna. Okay, hold on. We'll, we'll, we'll give it a like 30 more seconds. Oh, Jerry shut the poll down. Good job. Did I? I think oh, I so. told you that monitor is too far away. <laughs> 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 I thought I was voting. <laughs> Yeah. There will everybody that voted voted yes. Okay. To approve the the financial motion report. approved and, and and passed. All right. Uh, do we have a um, uh, an audit uh, committee report? Well, no. The quick answer is no. <laughs> well, that's we, all I need to know. Maybe. <laughs> We've talked with Sherry. We're going to figure out how to do this via uh, Zoom. Okay. That's we'll have a report later. Okay. So, Jay Lee, would you want to make a couple comments about the, uh, you know, 2020? Obviously, we canceled the face to face. We did discuss 2021 and 2022. You're the program chair. So, you want to make a couple comments about next summer and the summer after? Uh, sure. So we voted to, uh, the board voted to not have a, an in-person uh, conference in 2020. And we also voted to not have an in-person conference in 2021. So we are hoping to have an in-person conference in 2022 in Missoula. Um, and in the meantime, we're moving to... Uh, do Zoom webinars, which we'll do better than we did tonight um, for this year. Okay. If you got questions, uh, I guess post them in the chat the easiest way. And Jaylene, my, I've got my, let's see, maybe I can move that bar. Hold on. I may have to have you check chat because somehow my, eh, maybe I can move it. Ah, it's not good over here. Okay. Um, okay, I guess chat disappeared when we went to polls. <laughs> Lesson learned. And, and, any, anybody, let's see what's happening here. Oh, there's chat coming back.
Okay, hold on. Yeah, we. I got chat back on. Sorry, dumb. How does one become a member? Uh, through through our web page, but uh, the web page is in a, a state of flux. We'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, oh, oh, I see. Jaylene already answered that. www.westernapicultursociety.org, but society doesn't have an extra E at the end. Um, oh, gosh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the bad typing there. And somebody asked, what about folks who chose not to get their money back from 2020 and put it towards 2021? I assume that they're, they're, we're copacetic on that, aren't we? Yes, I, um, so Rebecca, I did reimburse or theoretically reimburse people. So if there's, like, you didn't get reimbursed, please let me know. Because I, I refunded money. And a question about our dues, dues due per calendar year. No, oh, so Sherry just answered, yes, they're due on a calendar year, so. All right, um, let's move on to uh, an, uh, the next issue. We had some discussions while we thought we were going to have a face-to-face -face meeting about providing a student, uh, a, a part of the agenda would allow students from the western states and provinces to present their research and also an opportunity to get to know each other. That has, you know, and we also asked the directors from every state and province to go out to state associations and to um, um, beekeepers, bee supply houses and so on, pass the hat and see if they could come up with some funds for students to travel to that face-to-face -face presentation. Well, we still hope to do that, but that's now been pushed out to 2022. But over the, fr from now and, through the next year, we're hoping to have at least monthly sessions with, for presenters similar to what we did tonight. And so um, I got to thinking about the student research presentations, had a brief conversation with Lauren Stormel today about the student things. And we're trying to figure out a way that we can use Zoom and use that to facilitate students being able to present some of the things they're working on and to meet and greet and collaborate and maybe even set up some collaboration for the other students. So Lauren, are you still on? I sure am. Yes, Jerry. Thanks. And that, yeah, that seems like a really good goal. And I would really hope that we'd be able to get some of the students that are working on projects like uh, Mr. Debnam's to um, describe what their efforts are and and get them enthused about the hopeful meeting in 2022. So Lauren, what, what could you use from directors and members in terms of what would help you with these students? Uh, the biggest um, benefit I think would be is if the directors could be in touch with uh, institutions that have the apiary courses and uh, just spread the word that we'd like to have a, a 30 to 45 minute presentation to uh, keep the people informed and build enthusiasm and knowledge throughout the whole, the whole section of the continent. And how would so, they, how best should they get a hold of you, Lauren? You've got a committee too, but uh, if they want, if they want to volunteer to help find students and so on, how should they contact you? Email would be the best. Yep. And um, I haven't checked the, the website recently, but I believe my email address is still out there on the, um, on the website. Okay. So that would be best. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone have any questions for Lauren to throw up on chat? I just don't see any, but I did get a, well, there are people pondering that. Sherry did come back and say, if you're a new member, to was your membership starts to th that day and goes to the end of the next year. So that can be a bit of a bonus for new members. So if you become a new member today, it would still be good in December, 2021. So, all right, committees. I, you know, I don't think we've got a lot of committees, but I may have forgotten one. Is there any other committee out there that has a report to give?
Well, probably doing the uh, nominations committee. Okay, that's that comes up when we get down at the end when it gets to elections. Okay, uh, uh, I'll, I'll I'll get to that one. Other than nominations and elections. <laughs> Okay, not hearing any more. Uh, let's go on to a little bit of an overview of the old business. So right after the Oregon meeting, unexpectedly, Sarah Red Laird resigned and that left Waz without a president. And I was asked whether I would become the acting president, which I agreed to, but I didn't realize it might um, extend past the summer of this last year, I, we talked to the board and the board authorized my extending, my continuance as president. Then uh, about the, a little after uh, that occurred, uh, working with Sherry, our accountant and the executive board and board looked at uh, the incorporation of was in California. And the decision was made to move the WAS nonprofit corporation to Idaho uh, from California. That, that both saved us some money and it also made uh, some of the paperwork a lot easier. Okay. I'll, I'll let Sherry comment that on the moment. And then we were starting the lineup, as I said, for both a monitoring and be in a high monitoring conference that was an international conference. And we were going to have the WAS meeting in Missoula until, as I say, the cancellations came in and that caused us to have to regroup. And, and as you can see, WAS ended up, we, we were not sure how well our membership would be, would receive uh, digital meetings. Uh, since some of our members don't even have email, but uh, we were rather pleased and surprised to see how many people registered for the, our first test run this evening, uh, going moving to Zoom. So we weren't quite, COVID hadn't quite finished with us when the May issue of the journal came out. And of course it had to basically say that everything had been postponed for another year. And the week after that, our editor resigned, leaving us without a, an editor for either the print journal or any of our digital activities. And about that time, the people in the monitoring conference uh, began to discuss that they really didn't want to see the whole thing canceled. And could we do something? And that went from a small short meeting to what ended up on October 5 through the 9th to be a five day meeting with 50 speakers from around the world representing 14 different countries. And if you missed that particular conference, the good news is it's at the end of the, the my last slide here, will give you a link to the abstracts and all of the 15 to 20 minute videos from all 50 presentations that occurred in October. So uh, you can reach, go to those at your leisure or at your convenience. I suggest that you start with the abstract, if you got a, a titles and abstracts, when you read an abstract or something that, that appeals to you, then you can flip over to the uh, video, find the video and, um, and view them online. Now, there's a couple things. We're still making a few changes in, in the abstract listings. We're going to add the, uh, a number that indexes to the videos to make that a little bit easier. Uh, so, and if you some reason come in and the, the links don't work, drop me a line because there's next week or so there'll be some changes. But I, I do have a link at the end here that should work for everything. So in our executive committee meetings and board meetings, we made the decision to switch from an emphasis on a print journal, which quite frankly, for the size of this, uh, this society, the number of members we had and the cost of putting out a print journal, the fixed deadlines, getting everything in place by a certain time to so get it to the printer, the shipping and postage, particularly overseas, all of that made it really difficult um, to justify a print journal. And the journal, frankly, was, was surviving on the basis of the advertisements from the advertiser, the equipment advertisers primarily, and a few sponsors. But the reach of the journal was down to a few hundred people 
Whereas on our Facebook page, we were reaching people, several thousand people were following it. So we were in it. Once we lost our print editor, we started looking for an editor. We've screened, some, we've talked to a variety of people, um, and we come up with with a, an overall agreement to try to contain constrain costs a bit by switching from a print journal. Uh, that doesn't mean we might not have some type of newsletter or something that uh, would that you could download as a PDF and print it on your own printers. But we really wanted to explore the digital media offerings to see if we can reach a, a broader audience and maybe even a younger audience because it doesn't seem like a lot of younger folks nowadays are going to print media for information. They tend more to, to live more in the digital world. And part of that then caused us to look at our website. And you probably noticed that our website has not changed much since, uh, the, since May. There's a reason for that. Our website was built using a program called WordPress. And it's a very good program for building websites if you've got a person managing it who is really conversant with, with WordPress because it's not an easy platform to change things on. In fact, it, is, it proves to be uncommonly difficult, particularly when you inherit a web page that has several years of information that has not been windled down or sorted or uh, basically uh, subjected to a good housekeeping. Uh, so we're going to move with, again, with the board's authorization, we are going to move to from WordPress to a program called Wix, which is much easier to manage, much easier for other people to, to insert content into. And we're trying to move to We've set up a committee whose job is has two two tasks. One is we have, we we no longer want to be constrained by the idea that whoever we have as a media manager or a editor has to then also be conversant, be issues and up to date. It seems like the digital web and Twitter and and Instagram or whatever platforms and Facebook the web page, whatever we decide on eventually to use, requires somebody that's adept in the digital world of helping us set things up and posting things, uh, and that the content should come from the members who understand bees and know who's beekeepers and researchers and the students who can help provide content. And the other job that I, I've asked this committee to do is to prune down the information on the existing website so that we've got a we've hired we've been authorized to hire a student from the Uni University of Montana who specializes in websites he works with the University of Montana's online learning program and he's going to tr hopefully over the Christmas break here generate a new website for WAS on this new platform that should be a whole lot easier to maintain and a whole lot easier to keep fresh with and timely and for a variety of people to upload the content to. Now there was a there was concern expressed by the board and my own concern about how our advertisers might view moving from a print journal to digital. And it took us a while to get a listing of the advertisers. It was scattered through several memory sticks and a lot of files. And thanks to Steve uh, Sweet and, Jay, and particularly to Jaylene Naylor, who eventually wrote a script to pull all those files together. So we finally had a list of our advertisers and sponsors. And when that list came together, I noticed some notes from our previous editors saying something about, well, they've decided to take a vacation from advertising for a while, or they're rethinking how they're advertising. Well, I found out what the answer to that was because I called and personally talked to as many of the advertisers and sponsors as I could find. Not all were answering their phones because, again, because of COVID, many of them had hunkered down and were, were not answering phones, didn't have a receptionist. They were basically communicating via their website. But for those, for all of those groups, they said, I, I, I came back with, I found a common theme. And the theme was those who had discontinued their advertising 
primarily had done so because they did not want to advertise in the print media. They wanted a broader reach, a more timely response, and they were moving their own businesses to a digital platform and they were looking for ways of advertising their B equipment, their supplies, whatever, uh, through digital outlets. So I had expected to have some pushback from advertising saying, oh, no, no, you have to keep a print journal. And the answer was, well, actually, we had moved looking for something other than a print journal to advertise in. So I think the the goal at the moment is to broaden and improve our digital offerings and then to be able to provide our advertisers with a much bigger audience. And we work towards monetizing that and instead of charging them for ads in a print journal, we come up with a system that's fair to them in terms of uh, monetizing um, things like our Facebook and our webpage and perhaps even our Zoom meetings, which brings me to the last issue of the old business. Since we couldn't really didn't work out well this year for an annual large face-to-face -face meeting, and now it's extended into next year, one of the thoughts is to try, and this, this meeting tonight was the first experimental meeting, if we got a good response to this, and we actually had uh, well over about 360 registrants, and I'm sure that those who weren't on live tonight will be visiting to see the presentations uh, later in the week or in the weeks that follow. But we're thinking about offering monthly offerings, at least monthly, and featuring knowledgeable beekeepers, researchers, and students, so that WAS essentially starts providing more timely uh, content and perhaps uh, more, things that keep people's interest. And we're, we're very open to any suggestions from the directors and for the membership of how we can use some type of monthly forum uh, to engage our members and also to recruit new members. So that's my, my overall summary of that. Um, Sherry or Jaylene, do you have any, any other comments you'd like to make on that quick run through? I'll just say that it's been a challenging year to keep the organization going and viable and, and interesting for folks. And I think um, going forward and using the digital media, uh, changing the, um, the platform for the website and doing these uh, webinars in the next year to um, kind of take the place of the face-to-face -face conference for that year, I think are gonna be um, hopefully very well received by those folks that we wanna try to get involved, which are the younger folks. So I'm, I'm excited about that. Good, Jaylene, Steve. Um, so I would just say that uh, I think next month we're hoping to do a Zoom webinar format uh, if we can get that figured out um, so we don't have to have the uh, registration issues, which we had tonight, which is why, like, I, I missed all of Etienne's presentation because I was dealing with that, but we'll get it figured out. Okay, so so the comment on the webinar, when we did the, when I did the one on, with Frank Linton for the monitoring conference, Zooms normally cuts off at 300 people. And, but there is a, a, a Zoom webinar thing that Zoom offers. And under the Zoom webinar license, but it takes a, a different setup and a different registration, you can accommodate up to a thousand people. Uh, so that uh, we're unlikely anytime soon, I would think not to exceed a thousand. But just for this meeting tonight, we ended up with uh, more people registered than we could accommodate but the 300 for that you know we're, it's a learning exercise here so uh steve uh, you had said about moving the website converts to wix uh, the book the board has already approved that and we've already we have a we're in the paperwork's in process to hire the student to make the move so uh, i don't think we need the membership to vote on that got it i thought you wanted it so 
No, that's fine. I'm just trying to move it along. Yeah, now that's I'm fine. Go back that's fine. We, we're already we've got the student online and we've got it we've got it set up how to pay him and so on. So and the so under the new business, which I've kind of actually locked into, uh, the first thing here is to work on the website. If anybody wants to volunteer or help the committees working on pruning down the old website, restructuring the website, um, con providing content for it, please, uh, Jaylena, are you the best contact at the moment for the content and pr pruning committees or does somebody else? Yes, yes, please. If, it, if anybody has pictures, uh, content, please send them to me. And Videos? <laughs> video anything send it to me yeah. okay and so this first meeting that we had is on a saturday evening when we look you know was basically encompasses everything from uh montana south and north uh all the way to hawaii so we actually lap over several time zones and by starting at the seven o'clock we were trying to ensure that the people in Hawaii and so on didn't weren't still at work when the, the meeting started. So what we're looking for is input on the monthly meetings and the scheduling. If there are particular days of the week, if, whether a weekday or a weekend works best, uh, obviously on weekdays, you pretty well need to do them in the evening. I don't think people want to get up early morning uh, for a meeting, but uh, uh, we could really use some input from the from both the directors and the membership. Um, Jaylene, did you put together any questionnaire on that, or um, I did not. Okay, I can it. send something out. So the other thing that comes up in every single discussion we've had this year, and one thing we were concerned about, is losing members because of the shutdown imposed by COVID, and we really need to to grow the membership. But we also realize we're not going to grow the membership until we have something of interest to offer to people that we're recruiting. So once again, I've got an open request out to, uh, to directors and to committees uh, for suggestions for recruitment. And if nothing else, just go to B meetings and, and talk to beekeepers you knew in your area and contact local colleges and universities and let them know that, that WAS exists and that we're going to start showing up monthly online and we're trying to make sure that the people essentially we can make this as readily available to as many people as possible and I think that will also gain us with the advertisers because the bigger reach we get the more people the more they're going to see this there's some value in advertising through was so um, so that's kind of what I had on my my short list here for new business uh, J Jaleen, you were talking about some type of poll, and I'm, I opened it up to, is again, <coughs> if people want to use chat or so on, if they got any questions or comments under new business, time to do it now. Do you want it under chat? Yeah, put it under chat. I think it's the easiest way. Unless, Jaleen, you have a good way of seeing all six. Oh, yeah. Yeah, throw it under chat, and then um, we can start the elections, um, which we have to do. That sounds like a good idea. So people can put questions in the chat and let's let let's move on to the elections. And I think Steve, you're 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 in the hot seat for this, or is it going to be Jaylene? <laughs> well, can, can you? So I haven't done polls before. So let's see. Can you guys see? Okay. A so poll now. I guess the first thing is is that. Uh, Steve, do you have comp before you get to the polls? We've got some name and names here and so on. Steve, do you have any anything comments about nominations to add before we get to the poll? The comment I have about the nominations, Jerry, is you've done a hell of a job putting together people to mm -hmm. line this up. And this is a great slate. And I I'm encouraging the uh board to go after this and make a vote so we can all go finish our dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. But I won't argue with that. Can you guys can you guys see the poll? Yes, I can. No. Okay. And can't type fast enough to get it into chat. No. We'll have to uh, relaunch it. 
I how does one I only, see that, I only see the results, not the poll. Well, I've got a poll up saying uh. sharing poll results, but I'm on a, I'm a co-host, so maybe I'm getting. Did you want me to oh, relaunch? Shoot. Oh, oh, there we go. Shoot. Let, let me let me try. Let, now, let me try and close the polling. <laughs> no, but you can relaunch. We, have, we haven't done button. this before. There we go. We're good. Yeah, it's up. Now it's up. Okay, it's up with the green banner on top. I think it's active that way. And you guys can click on stuff. Oh. Yes. Well, I'm clicking, but I don't see anything happening. <laughs> oh my gosh. I. It looks there, like it's highlighting a little bit. Oh, I think maybe, hold, let me see. Jerry, could you stop sharing your screen and maybe, sure. I don't know. There are some beekeepers that, this is Lisa in, Ho in Alaska, that I know in Hawaii Hi, who might be interested. Hi, how are you? <laughs> um, they might be interested in joining if they're not already members. So maybe that'll help with, with having a director from Hawaii. Oh, good. So on, okay, your, um, that... on your poll for okay. Hawaii, it's say, like um, I live in Hawaii and, and Jerry will get in contact with you for that. Oh, I actually live in Alaska, but I, I, I understand I, I that, oh. but you do know people. So at least Jerry would get in touch with you about that. Okay. And I've lost, <laughs> oh my gosh, I've lost the uh, poll again. Oh, this is well. so, it, it's so not ideal. That's, but it, it's entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I would say that, but yeah. <laughs> At least people are voting. Well, if you are voting, the numbers are showing up. Mine stopped. Uh, oh my gosh. But yeah, I mean, like I have one button that says end poll. That's that's all I've got, so. Yeah, well, what I know is that it doesn't really jump at you when you click on it that it took it, but the number changes, so. Mm. I'm assuming it's me clicking, but I'm not sure. You must put something down for every category before submit will will light up that you can click it. So you have to vote in every one of those. Oh, thank you, Dewey. Where where does one find the poll when it's disappeared? <clears throat> There's a button this in is the a bottom good... beside the chat button. Beside the chat button. Chat. The bottom bar. I don't have a bar. You know, I got an end polling at the bottom, but but I don't want to click that because I think I got a host right here. <laughs> Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Don't yeah, don't click that. I don't have. To. Oh, well, thank you all for experimenting with us because this is new. <laughs> new, definitely new. I think the Zoom format is a little bit different whether you're using a phone, a laptop, or an iPad. Probably. I, ab <laughs> absolutely, yeah. Because I'm on an iPad, which is weird for me but oh i've been on an ipad on zoom and it's not it's not the same <laughs> so well the only thing i'm seeing come out of this thing that's really clear at the moment is nobody wants to be the secretary <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm still looking for the poll well we'll get a few a few more minutes and then you know, certainly everybody can like email me or or Jerry. Um, I have vote. a question. Sure. I, yes. I, I was asked um, um, pre COVID, um, and I was supposed to come up for if um, I was going to be axed or uh, I could um, run for election if there was a big conference in Montana that didn't happen. So, am I on that poll? Do I need to vote for myself? <laughs> Because I didn't see it. I know it was a temporary, but I want to uh, continue. Yeah, I, yeah, I think you, you came in early, so you, yeah, you, you, you yeah, you're, you're listed as Shelley appointed by president, and so the, you, the votes are, do you continue or not? And so far, 
You know, I'm not. Well, <laughs> that is. Oh like, no, no, no! I, I, I'm <laughs> sorry. So, Shelly, you're in Alaska, and you're. No, Shelly's here. I'm Lisa. No, I'm oh, Lisa. sorry. Lisa. Okay, Lisa, wrong I one. Apologize. Sorry, sorry. Hey. I apologize, Lisa. That's I okay. Think you're you're Me. in the next poll. There's one oh. more poll. Oh. Okay. Okay, I'm going to end this poll and I'm going to open the other one. Okay. <laughs> Lisa, actually, your term goes through 2021 because so you I'm took over. You're okay because you took over somebody else's term or that that section of that term that was still open. So you are still good until 2021. Okay. 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 Thank you. Good. So I have Thanks for asking, Lisa. Yeah. Thank you. All right, let me launch. There's a second part, a second poll, because you okay. can only have a certain number of polls or yeah. um, selections. And some of the people like Belden and so on, and he comes up with Lisa, Shelley, and so on, were, were appointed during the last year to fill, to fill long-standing empty positions. So, uh, Well, and Jerry, and those that are listed are the ones that that specific term ended in 2020. Yep. And so they do need to be redone. Yep. Um, some folks still had another year or two left on that term. And so they are not on this election. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank goodness for you, Sherry. Okay, so and Steve. number three says member at large open dues paying member, please. Uh, member at large represents um, so submit your name in chat or to be re be researched at AOL.com. That's my email and so on. So um, you can either put your name in chat or you can send a private email to me. So yes. at least two people said they're interested, which is good news. And um, so send me your names. All right, we'll wait like uh, 20 more seconds or something. Oh, I see Dewey said, I was one who checked member at large interest. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. Well, there's two people though. So there's somebody else that <laughs> I'm looking for. Perfect. Thank you though, Dewey. All right. Thank you, Dewey. All right. All right. I'm actually gonna end the poll. Um, so, so this is totally new to all of us, so. I don't think there are any contested. All right, I, maybe we can just send out a report about all this and like, yeah. I think this was our last I think thing. basically everybody that was listed was, uh, was okay. We're still looking for a secretary. Uh, yes, that's really do that's need a secretary, be. folks. So, if somebody would be willing to be the secretary, please let us know. <laughs> Hi, this is Melanie. I just put in a, the chat that, yeah, if there's nobody else interested, I'll, I'll step up to, to try that role. Um, but if somebody else is interested, then maybe we can do it together. <laughs> that sounds fine. <laughs> Yes, I, I remember uh, a curmudgeon out in the Seattle King County B clubs that actually helped a lot of them get going. And when I was doing monitoring work out there, he was the, he wrote the a newsletter and everybody said, well, you got to go talk to Roy about the newsletter. He says, but you know, he's a bit of a curmudgeon. He can be rather difficult, but uh, we really kind of cut him some slack because people don't like writing the newsletter and so on. So then I sat down one day and uh, ran, Roy's uh, um, house, and he, he looked at me and he says, I, I, I'm the editor of the newsletter. He says, I can get away with anything I want to because they're afraid that if, uh, if I quit, they won't find someone else. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so those type of jobs, that we really appreciate uh, the help. Uh, somebody asked, is there only two pages of voting? Jaylene? Yes. Yes, okay. we're done voting. Okay. So I'm going to go back to share for a moment because I got a, a, a link on it, but I think we're pretty well done here. So.
Okay, so did we have any other questions that came up about business? Let me check the chat for a moment here. Whoops. Well, let's try that again. Sorry, folks. So Jerry, tomorrow I'll, I'll run the um, reports on the results. Okay, thank you. Can I say something out of sync? Because when I try to type it, it doesn't happen. Sure. I think having online workshops and such is an excellent way to bring in new people. Um, because when I got this post from ATN about this one, I sent it to all of the different um, beekeeping forums, Facebook forums in Alaska, throughout Alaska. So it reached, I don't know, six, seven, 800 people. Um, and they're getting something out of it, um, which uh, Alaskans are pretty hungry for bee information, honey, beekeeping information, particularly from Northern. So, if, you know, if that's happening, being announced in all the states, I think that's a great way to get younger people and more people interested in becoming members. Thank you, Lisa. Okay, so- I'd like to say something, Jerry, too. Sure. I suggested in chat, uh, rather than one person trying to be thinking of doing a monthly meeting or uh, every other month or whatever, that they farm that out to our representatives from the states and provinces. Set mm -hmm. up a schedule and get uh, suggestions and uh, you know who would be appropriate for these type of uh, presentations. That sounds good. Thank you, Dewey. So I, I've got a slide up here and we already were surprised at how many, and with very short notifications so on, of how many people registered. Um, and yes, not everybody that registered could get in at the first time. And as Jaylene said, they caused some, some effort. But I do know from using the Zoom webinar thing for international conference, uh, we had no problem handling uh, large numbers. So, um, and we, we were online for three to two to four hours a day for five days. So uh, we can't, that all worked quite well uh, considering. So um, the, um, so we're, we'll be working on with uh, Zoom to come up with something that we're not capped at 300 because if we're going to offer content and so on, we'll just as soon not have it uh, uh, affected that way. Uh, we are intending, we will be posting this session in a few days. We need to set up a YouTube channel where we can post these things. Uh, so we are, as somebody asked about jo joining the society, there's the link there for joining the society. It's basically westernapriculturesociety.org. And well, somehow, and I was going to use that one, but I didn't have to because of that. So I obviously picked up the wrong, the wrong thing. I will send out to everybody, and we'll post when we when we post up these um, video, the video of this on our YouTube channel, and we'll send out a notice that it's up. Uh, Jaylene, do you have a, a mailing list of the 360 registrants that we can send a notification out to? I do, um, but my, my plan is to email out to the people that couldn't get in, mm -hmm. um, email them the link. I'll, I mean, uh, I think it's sort of like a, everyone. Yeah, I, I mean, I just don't want to like barge into people's email, but I'll, I'll send out a link to the recording. Okay, well, the one thing I was going to gonna them. pull up, but I don't want to go search. Oh, wait a minute. Just a second, I'm, ah, there it is. Hold on, sorry, I'm not, I'm checking my chat for a moment. Uh, oh, and you're fine while you're checking that. I mean, like Dewey said, WAS is not about to host over 300. I mean, we had almost 400 people register. Yeah. And, and so, if, I mean. <clears throat> if you had made it, as if you had made it 
or, or do in the future, that if you join WAS, you get access to free monthly workshops from around this yeah. side of the continent. I think that you would get a giant influx of new people and word would spread like, hey, all you gotta do is be a member of this and you get access because there's so much knowledge here. And, and the, I don't think you'd be bombarding people's emails at all to email all those people. I know that's how I get most of my information is email or posts. Um, but I think you would have got, and you guys charged $20 for that monitoring conference. Yeah, yeah we, had, we had 460 um, some people registered. And you know, the, there's been some research that says that, you know, if you're not paying anything for it, you know, people tend to drop out, not go, not participate, et cetera. The fact that it was only $20 made me question in the beginning before I saw the details of whether or not it was gonna be really worth it. it, like, it like it's probably not gonna be much meat for 20 bucks, but if it was like, I guess this is gonna sound weird, if you guys had charged $100, I would have thought, I would have had my mind, this is important. Yeah, and, and so yeah. Lisa, that's a good point. Frank and I had no idea how well this is gonna go as a digital type of thing. And we also didn't wanna, you know, in some of the countries that we're going to, uh, 20 US dollars is a lot more than it might be here and so on. So we had people from as far away as Nepal uh, and that. So we figured, well, what do we need to pay for our help work? We had some students that helped us and, and that they were a godsend and so on. The good news is that we actually not only didn't chase people off, but we got so, uh, enough of them that we got enough of a pot that today I had the pleasure of giving our hardworking students who were taking classes and put in, you know, dropped everything to get this thing done for us and so on. And, Given the time frame and so on, I think they did a marvelous job, both Frank and I. <coughs> and we sent our Christmas bonus today. <laughs> so, you know, this is another problem we've had. You know, Steve it frets about the dues fee and so on and whether anyway you pay it. And of course, that depends on what people see exactly as you say value in it and so on. But, you know, if you can increase the thing from a few hundred to a few thousand people and so on, all of a sudden you can essentially. Uh, reduce the cost, but when you're trying to pay for an expensive print journal and so on, that was the bind we were getting into. So, uh, yeah. you know, this is, not this is a brand new experiment, but uh, I, yeah. I kind of think, I think we're on to something here. I think this meeting with the number of people who registered gives us an indication that we, we need to take that barrier away so that we can get as many out as possible. And Jaylene, in the chat, uh, people are asking to be known uh, to be informed when the thing's posted. And what, I, what I'll say to you is I picked up the wrong, um, I, I had added one slide just before the meeting and I grabbed the wrong file, but we're working at the moment of, we've got all 50 of the videos up on the monitoring conference. That's the only thing I was digging for on this last slide. We got all 50 of them up on a YouTube channel. And then we got 49 of the 50 people wrote a 200 to 250 people. Uh, word abstract. So the abstract gives you, you can go to the title, then read the abstract, and then if that's interest, you can go to the uh, uh, video rather than having to watch 12 and a half hours of consecutive videos. I mean, that's what we've got, it's 12 and a half hours of videos there and so on. So you can prioritize where you want to go and use the abstract. That was all put in place just this week. The one thing we're, the last thing we're doing is putting in a, um, a link so that we tie the abstracts back to the videos. And so that'll take a couple of days. So Jaylene, if we can reach that, use that full list of people that you have registered, I think we should send out a, a, a very short email with two links, one to wherever the YouTube channel is that we've got this meeting on and so on. And the other one is to make available all those uh, uh, monitoring conference videos. Yes. Yep. So, and yes, I agree. And Mel Melanie, are you still there? Yes, I'm here. So Melanie, I had a thought for next month, <laughs> not to put you on the spot in public, but <laughs> <laughs> you had suggested you would be willing to give some type of presentation. We know that you're you, with a queen breeding uh, business and so on, that's near and dear to your heart. And one of the presentations that was that was really kind of fun from the monitoring conference was the woman out of Georgia that's using aerial drones to uh, essentially fly lures and take uh, video of uh, mating flights 
uh, which are really quite nice because the camera's right above the lure and so on. And she's also using those to map drone congregation areas and has a website up for North America for mapping drone congregation areas. So I was thinking, and this is just my thought, was perhaps, you know, like we did these two on, on temperature regulation, maybe something from you on what, your research or Queens or so on, and then tie in this drone congregation talk and, and do something similar to what we did tonight. Does that, does that make any sense to you? Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Um, I've, I've heard of her, um, of her work, but I haven't actually gotten to hear details about it or, or hear her speak. So I would love to. Well, love she, to she, and time. she's very willing to talk about it. She's already agreed to make a presentation. This great, great. I think uh, B culture ABJ has an article Malcolm Sanford called her up right after the meeting and, and so on. But, uh, uh, she, and, and she was, and for your information, she did her homework. Uh, she actually ran Jerry Loper to the ground to talk about drone congregation areas. So uh, <laughs> we're kind of transferring old information because he did all the radar work for drone congregation areas. And right, right. So um, I, if uh, if you're agreeable, Jaylene and I will be getting a hold of you and see if we can put something. We'll put you in contact with Julia and see if maybe that might make a good topic for the next month. Sure, yeah, that, that sounds great. Okay. May I, may I ask, you know, ATN's presentation was very short to me. They're both really short. And I'm wondering, like, if she's going to talk about queen breeding, I don't want a half an hour. I want at least an hour. <laughs> and <laughs> well, that's I, the other question wonder, we have, is how long to make them, because uh, we learned this for online courses. People online don't have a very long attention span. <laughs> And sometimes well, that's it's more it's important to keep it short and succinct and make and, and provide the contact with the speaker, you know, so it all depends on the, you know, you know, I'm open to what the, the membership has and so on, but, um, you know, that, that's, that's, we, we actually help. went from 15 minutes on our monitoring conference to half hour on these, so, or 45, so. People can always get up and go to the bathroom or do whatever they want and just close their screen down and keep it on and come back. So, I mean, if they've got short attention spans, I'm just thinking of cramming like ATN's presentation. Each one of those slides was almost its own presentation. Well, that's and one it, of the reasons why we want to make them available after the fact, because even in, in any live situation, those, those are very densely packed with information. So, um, Jaylene, that's one of the type of things that we, I think we can do with in a poll. It's on, we'll find out. I mean, we're trying to, we, the 15 minutes for our monitoring folks, it turned out to be the type of thing that they would make a 15 minute video presentation. So they complain somewhat, but if you go to a professional association, they're oftentimes gonna cut you down to 15, 20 minutes. That's just kind of the, you know, the idea is to make the introduction to the person that you want to know, but you know, if, you know, my only fear is that we put people to sleep with too long online. And so, but we can certainly ask the membership and so on about where the sweet spot is on that. Uh, I mean, Etienne was happy to give us a three hour presentation if we wanted it. Uh, <laughs> Except that now people are going to all flood Etienne's email and private, like he, he gave us the taste. And if we want more, we're all going to run to him. Whereas if he was giving us, uh, sorry, Etienne. If he was giving us a longer presentation, we might not have to contact him. We could, you know what I'm saying? I'm just thinking, do we well, end no, up that's, flooding that's, the speaker? That's, you know, we're, we're open to suggestions on this. Uh, it's easier to start with short ones and see how that works and so on and to lengthen them. But at some point we're gonna run into when people essentially nod off in the presentation or they won't get into them because they don't wanna devote that much time. Yeah. So, Can I mention something, Jerry? Sure. Um, and this is in an effort to kind of find a happy medium between the, these two uh, these two sort of um, ideas here. Because I, I, I agree, I mean, on the one hand, we can't have the meetings, you know, each month can't be like a full conference, right? That's, that's pretty extensive. Mm -hmm. um, but it could be a taster of sorts. And then of the attendees that are there, those that want more info, you know, take a poll if they want a more in-depth, you know, um, presentation, then, then that's something that can be scheduled at a later date. That may be about, 
Yeah, I, 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 that's a good point, Eric, uh, Melanie. Just to uh, jump in really quick. Sure. Uh, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting, and then we can have this continued chat afterwards. And that okay. I so, agree with you. So I'll I move to adjourn the second. meeting. I second the motion. <laughs> uh, motion made. Is that any discussion? If not, uh, you know, wave your hands or something to say. <laughs> or chat to, to Bye. Three. <laughs> I think we're adjourned.